Oh, it's Monday. That means it's time for a live stream with Peter Austin yeah. off of Team Triple Jumps. Oh yeah, here we go. Tiny Peter Austin time. How are you? Hope you had a nice weekend. Excited to catch another stream. Awesome job on the latest episode of Worst Games Ever. It was awesome. Big love to you, my dude. Oh, it's all happening. We missed Joe B1 Kenobi. Joe B1 Kenobi, while we're on the little title card there, live soon. A little subscription came, I say little. It's a big one. Joe B1 Kenobi, subscribed via Twitch Prime. Been with us for 10 months total now, and currently on a five month streak. Thank you, Joe B1 Kenobi. Sorry that you were, you were just so quick in there. You didn't even get your little, your little B-Whip. In fact, hey, let me do an extra B-Whip just for you. That's the final J there. Uh, here we go. Team Triple Jump just subscribed. This is a test. Well, thanks, Joby One Kenobi. That's that's you there. Thank you. Uh, so then we had Stephen Skoda's hundred bits. Oh yeah, here we go. Time to be Ross in time. How are you? Hope you had a nice weekend. So let's catch another stream. Awesome John Lewis. It was the worst games ever. It was awesome. Big love to you, my dude, Stephen. Thank you very much. Um, I really enjoyed editing that that worst games ever. I thought it was quite a fun one. Lots of silly. Stupid, silly, silly, stupid things happening in that uh, in that one, um, and uh, yeah, it was great. It's um, Top Gear Daredevil. If anyone wants to go watch it after the stream or something, it's on the channel in the usual place. Team Triple Jump on YouTube. Lots of whips happening. I think someone might have done a little cheeky gift somewhere along the line. The hype train can't keep up with itself. Thank you, Stephen, for your kind words and for your blips. Uh, Booker Jertaz subscribed and said uh, nothing, <laughs> but they've been with us uh, for 20 months now. Thank you very much indeed. That's a real long time. Um, so that's wonderful. Lobrotovich is here. Um, and oh, that might be the only mod we've got at the moment. Oh, Trailing Badger's here. I scrolled down the chat. I see Trailing Badger. Uh, we'll keep an eye out for old Madstadactyl. Um, Wonderful. So, uh, Dead Eye Minis raided with a party of five. Hello, five people. Thank you for raiding. Let's let's have a little ocean man for that because keep meaning to just change yeah. the the it's threshold. It's Monday Fun Day, starting with Tiny Peter. It is. It's the tiniest of Peters, but H E S got a massive kind heart. You're an awesome dude. Glad to see you as always. A true highlight for me every Monday. Oh, for sure. Stephen, thank you very much. Coraline, but I want to wait until if I click this test raid button, it will overwrite any alert that's happening right now, and I don't want to. Is that. Okay, we've got riot code. Okay, I'll do it now. I oh, know, Chetty TV, I'll overwrite yours if I'm too. I'll wait for yours to come up, and then I'm going to go. Chetty TV, nice message. I'll read it in just a moment. But hey, what about, uh, oh, where's the button? Ocean Man, take me by my hand, lead me to the land, let you understand. Ocean Man, the voyage to the corner of the globe is a real trip. My, um, Spotify Discover Weekly, whatever it's called, um, suggested Ocean Man to me last week. And I listened to it and I was like, you know what, this is actually quite a good song. I'm going to add it. Sadly, it didn't have either the weird text-to-speech voice we've got singing there over the top of it or the squeaky voice teen off of The Simpsons. Ocean Man! Um, there's a plane out there or a helicopter. I can hear it doing a little little flyover. Uh, but, you know, the original song without any squeaky voices is still okay, I suppose. It's not quite as good. <laughs> Let's face it. But anyway, Dead Eye Minis, thanks for raiding. The final J, three whole months, you say? Look at you with a three-month streak and three months total. Thank you very much for being with us all that time. Uh, or, or I say being with us all that time, what I mean is thanks for sticking with us. You know, sometimes we see people subscribe and then they're, they're not able to hang around either because they don't want to or they're not able to or whatever. Uh, so it's nice, as much as it's nice to see all the people who've been subscribed for 24 months, it's equally nice seeing some of those smaller numbers because it means it's someone who is relatively fresh to the community, but they've been they've decided no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with it. Uh, here I am, 
I will get to that 24 one day, maybe. No pressure, Final J, but thank you very much. Um, Odie Lazus, let me just check, have I got the... Yeah, I have. Uh, Odie Lazus, or Lazus, according to taste. Subscribed by Twitch Prime for 14 months total, that's over a year. Hello TP and pal, oh no, that's Charlene Badger's message underneath. Uh, and, and a half babies is what... Uh, uh, Odie Lars' message is, uh, is there. I think you mean one and a half babies, presumably. But, I mean, it's nearly, it's more than one and a half babies, isn't it? What's two nines? Eighteen. What's half of a nine? Four and a half. What's nine plus four and a half? Thirteen point five. You've got, uh, you've got more than a baby and a half there. Slightly more. So, congratulations. Um, Datazoid. Uh, 1701 subscribe by Twitch Prime for 16 months. Life's been a mess, but finally made a live stream. Woohoo! Well, data Doy, it's lovely to have you with us. And look at you being subscribed for 16 months total. Even if you couldn't always make the live streams, you've been subbed all this time. That's wonderful. Thanks for supporting us, even though you've not been able to make all the streams all the time. That's, that's always nice when people do that. Hype train is halfway up to level 3 if you guys want to keep hyping. Hype that train! Woo woo! It's pay week! Can't wait to get paid this month. I mean, geez, I I really want to just buy stuff. I want to I want to stimulate the economy. No, that's not why I'm doing it. I'm doing it for myself. Uh, Daudian or Dordian, sorry for mispronouncing, but welcome to the Walrus Clan. You're a brand new sub via Twitch Prime. Thank you so much for subscribing. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Lovely to have a new a new sub. Um. Sapphire1693 subscribe. 21 month streak. Wow. That's a long time as well. All of these long times happening. Can't can't keep up with them all. Uh, thank you, Sapphire. No message. Just a subscription. Just just financial support for the channel. What 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 more is there to say? 100 blips from Steven Skodas with a second message there. Monday fun day. Uh, starting with Tiny Peter. The tiniest of Peters, but he's got a massive kind heart. You know what they say? Big heart, uh, uh, high blood pressure. You're an awesome dude. Glad to see you as always. A true highlight for me every Monday. Well, thank you, Stephen. It's always a highlight to have you with us. And uh, your your bits are gratefully received, as always. Corey Lionbar says, Be you whip. Happy Monday, Walrus Clan. Thank you, Corey Lionbar. Hype! We got there to level two and a half. Thank you, everyone for supporting the hype train there. Corey Lionbar, subscribe by Twitch Prime. Thank you, Corey. Thank you, Lionbar. Riot Code says, Oh boy, nearly one year of being a walrus. You're also on 11 months there, Riot Code. Yeah, you and Corey Lionbar together will be hitting your one year anniversary. Good luck to you both. You can have a little joint birthday party. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Cheddy TV, my bouncy baby Billy is two months old. You're also on 11 months. All these 11 monthers today. Uh, yesterday he or she did their first dab. I'm so proud. Love you, T.P. Thank you, Chetty TV. Congratulations. I'm glad that you're hitting all these milestones with your with your baby. Um, and, uh, you know, make a little album. Keep a lock of hair, a handprint. You know, all these little, little treasured memories. Because uh, you can get them out on the baby's wedding day or something when it's a lot older. CWT Wheelie subscribed by Twitch Prime for a whole year now. A full year. And I almost forgot about it because free subs don't automatically roll over. Can't thank you guys enough for the brilliant content during these weird times. Thank you very much for being with us for all that time. And uh, glad, glad we could help. Uh, nice of you to say so. Enbal, I'm subscribed for 24 months. That's two years. Two years, Enbal, says. That's almost as long as this month has felt thanks to COVID. Excited for many more lovely times with the Warriors Clan. Say the full name. You're right. You've got that in parentheses there. Say the full name. Um, wonderful. Thank you, Enbalam. That's a silly, silly long amount of time. Fantastic. Um, do 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 do. And that I think is all my alerts caught up on. Fantastic. Excellent. Yeah. Oh. I've made more progress on the worst games ever highlights video. Almost finished with the 
videos era and moving on to the triple jump era, the videos. one that will last for a million years. <laughs> also nearly finished with your birthday video. I'll be tweeting it to you Whoa. on your birthday. I'm sure you will enjoy it. I'm, I'm sure I will enjoy it too, Stephen, and the worst games ever won. You're busy, a busy, a busy, busy, a busy bee is the phrase I was looking for there. I knew it was some kind of animal, but I couldn't think what. A bi you're a busy bee. Thank you for the blips and for putting all that work into into the video. Uh, when is small man birthday, says Base Windu. My uh, small man birthday is on the 10th of April, so it's coming up. I'm going to be 29 years old. That's nearly 30. Wow. Good thing is, though, uh, by the time I'm 30, fingers crossed, touch wood, Sorry, that probably went right through the microphone there. Uh, like, COVID won't be as much of an issue anymore, so I'll be able to actually have a nice milestone birthday party without, you know, doing a 30th birthday Zoom quiz or something like that. So, um, wow. Excited. Exciting. Yeah, I'm sure, I, I'm sure I've caught up now. Have I? It felt like I wasn't... That I was a long way away from catching up, but no, I've done it. I've done it. It's all there. Are we all invited to your birthday party, says Odie Lazarus. And will there be jelly? There will be jelly. Uh, I, 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 I don't have birthday party plans yet, uh, so I can't possibly comment on the guest list. But no matter what the plans end up being, there will be jelly. So there you go. Um, I hope it's a milestone birthday, TP, says Kermit the Pog. Of course, of course it will be. I'm. Uh, I always, I always smile on my birthday. Some people don't like birthdays or celebrating them. Ben Potter is one who would prefer to just chill out at home and not have the attention. And hey, I can understand that. But I love the attention. I crave it. No, I don't. I just, I like, I like partying. You know, I like having. I don't like going out like mad partying. I don't like clubbing. I don't like clubbing. <laughs> Uh, but I like just you know getting together with with friends drinking and hey if I'm if I'm the guest of honor then so be it you know whatever and we'll celebrate anything but if it's for my if it's my day I'll take it uh Zolith and alt evolution both subscribed via twitch prime at basically the same time neither of you have put a message in there but thank you to Zolith underscore and to Alt Evolutions for your subscriptions. Zola's been with us for three months. Thanks for sticking with us for the first few months. Um, and uh, and Alt Evolutions for 16 months. Wow, it's over a year. Uh, Lord Brotherhood says, next year, your birthday, Unholy War Tournament. And then there's a little lizard emoji. I'm sure that's a Prana Devil. It's not a, it says Pog Champ when you hover over it, but I think it's, I think it's a Prana. Um, yeah, we do. That's what we're doing this year. In fact, well, we're not doing a tournament because it doesn't have online capability. But I will be uh, be playing some Unholy War for my stream this year, my birthday. A little birthday treat for myself. Not everyone wants to see me play it, but I'm just gonna do it anyway. Who's gonna stop me? Not you guys. And uh, it's Lord Rotovich's birthday present as well, from me to him. So there we go. Uh, right. Should we play some Haven? Shall we? Let's. So, if I sidle on over to here and then sort of reload the save state, I think. You getting that? A little recap here of what happened at the end of the previous stream. to set you free but stay inside this golden tower lest you call your darkest hour <laughs> well, that sounds a little too easy oh well here goes Bong. pay no attention to the sky there's a limit to how Haven, can you hear me on uh -oh. I need your help I'm stranded on the northern pole I've run out of the antidote Haven I oh why did this have to happen now? But stay inside this golden tower. Well, hold on, Chess. I'm coming. Go, Haven. Na, 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 na. 
Whoa, you can't just use a flag like that, Haven. That's not how it works. That is not how flags do. But apparently it is. Haven can just do whatever. Stay inside the tower, Haven, you Wilson, says Odie Lazarus. So, here we go, we're gliding. Oh, is there something I can do about that that line? Because that is really obnoxious, isn't it? Oops. Um... Hang on. There we go. I just closed the emulator by accident. Uh, I'll, I'll... Oh, has it refreshed itself? Oh, wow, okay. Just closing it and reopening it can fix it, seemingly. Oh, that's great. It's perfect now. Won't last, I'm sure. Uh, so, a little recap. Haven was brought... Or, or well, made his own way to... Oh, yikes. To a big bell tower here. Um, oh, that is definitely not what the game normally looks like when you play it on a PlayStation with that mist, but it's better than a big vertical line. Um, so, he... Uh... Oh. He came here to ring a bell to call back the king. That's why it's called Haven Call of the King, so that he can come and save everyone. He's a kind of a mythical king. He's a bit like King Arthur or someone like that. Um... And uh, while in the bell tower, he heard from his friend Chess. Oh, look at these these turrets. Who is uh, at the northern pole, I guess, of their home planet. So we're going to have to actually get into space and fly back to the right planet. Um, and she's running out of antidote. Because remember, all of the citizens of this fictional world are enslaved... They've all been poisoned with something, and they must keep keep having regular doses of an antidote, or they will die. So that stops them running away. Now, I think going through all those rings, I've now brought down the shield, which is good. I'm gonna glide down here. And if I press X, he'll sort of stick his feet out like that. Oh, Biff! Oh no, I did it! I did it really wrong. It's a bit of a weird landing animation. You just hold X, and he. He starts to wiggle his feet around like that. Um, oh, I shouldn't have done that, actually, because I think you can just lose. It does have actual gliding mechanics in it. It's not just infinite flight. Really lost some speed here, but I think this will give me a boost if I can make it. I'm really falling. Oh, no, I've died. <laughs> okay, we'll be fine now. We'll just do it properly. Um... So that's it, but clearly, by the message on the bell, it sounds like what we're supposed to do is actually stay in the tower after ringing it, and he's immediately having to leave, because Chess is in trouble. So uh, I'm going to have to go and try and help her out. Yikes. Seems to be losing... Losing speed again. Let me dive. Uh, oh, God. Okay, let's go this way instead. Da -da -da -da. So we have to go through all these rings because they're powering a big bubble shield that's around the, uh, the fortress. I can't reach my landing zone if I don't turn them off. Oh. oh, steady. Hit some sort of invisible ceiling there. 24-hour uh, gliding stream, says Dead Eye Minis. I mean, it's possible. Oh, you alright there, Hayden? Are you okay? Oh, we're not okay. Okay. Can I can I do this? Can I just like dive and then like pull up? Is that how it works? Just about. This might be enough just to kind of get me to spin around and do this one. Yeah, there we go. I don't remember this being as difficult as all this, but anyway, there we go. And right, I think I can just go through them again by the looks of it. Oh, maybe not. Will I get a boost by going through here a second time? No. Okay. Good to know. Right. 
Okay, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. I th I think I am possibly possibly going to make it. I'm really running out of speed here. Oh come on! I might have to immediately do a cheater Austin here. And uh, once I've done all these rings, I'll do a little quick save because what I don't want to do is like do them all and then end up dying when I try and land again. Because it seems it's very sensitive, this thing. I remember this being really straightforward. Never mind. We'll be okay. Right. Da, 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 da. You getting bored of this music yet? I am being shot at, but it doesn't tend to... I think that might, might be what killed me last time, actually. I think I actually got shot rather than hit the ring. But oh, let, me, let me just lose a bit of speed. Because I need to really dive here. Okay, there we go. This should be okay. Through there. Do a little turn. Turn around a little. Through here. And I've done it. Right, so now... Hold the land button. I'm just going to hold it. Oh wait, quick save. I've saved it, okay. Really strange animation, I think. But Oh, oh no, I'm going to miss. Oh, okay. I don't have to land right in it. That's good. Oh. So, flying into space, we have to defend our ship. And look, it's another one of those seamless flying into space moments. No loading screen at all. We've gone from right down there. You can already see the curvature of the planet. They're not big planets in this universe, but that's fine. Anyone see a geoglyph from up here? We're going to need to find them later. I don't see one. Oh, these ships just keep respawning. And look, we're in space now. Boom, boom. There we go. So now I just need to kill a few, a uh, couple of waves of these ships to fuel up my, fuel up my ship. So we've done this before. Same, same deal. Um, don't worry about that. We're fine. Careful you don't fly into those boys. There we go. I think it's only two or three of these little squadrons that you have to... Oh, steady. I don't want to get too close to these guys because... Oh, I'm really close to that one. Yikes. Okay, that's one. And I've got a gun as well here. Oh, steady. Different kind of ships, these ones. They look quite similar, but they've got different engines by the sounds of it. might just be two squads I have to 
destroy, actually. I can't remember. Uh, she's left. Okay, it looks like it's three, but that's fine. Oh yeah, we've got a little red bar filling up, have we? Is that what that is? Is that our fuel? Is it filled up two thirds? Oh no! Don't worry, I think it I think it saves what you've got. If the red bar is the uh, is what we're trying to fill, then it looks like it has done. Yeah, it's it's I think I said this on the last stream where we played Haven. It's a bit lame that you have to do this in order to... Whoa, what the flip is that? There's a mine. I've never seen that before in my entire life. And I've played this game several times. Oh, there we go. Yeah, three little squads. You said it before, TP, I know, but why wasn't this the first level? Just use that old cliche of losing your powers, etc. But at least people would know this, is part, this part of the game exists. Exactly. That's what the developers uh, said. Oh, yikes. They said... We definitely should have shown, like, played our seamless space travel card way sooner. Because technologically speaking, this is still incredibly impressive. It's a bit tedious that you have to do all this. Uh... Is this the planet that I need to get to? Destroy enemies to get weapons from. I'm not sure if it is. I'm going to try defeating three squads first. Um, yikes. Let's see if we get a weapon from the, this asteroid. Whoa! Okay. Oh, they're close. I hear them. It's a bit scary that, like... These guys can kill you instantly if they crash into you. Right, there we go. Oh, I did not touch that. Cheeky beggar. Okay, that's one. Oh, these have got shields! Okay, maybe I do need to actually use these asteroid weapons in order to get through their shields. Oh! I really wish they wouldn't do that. I mean, let's just see if I can shoot through these. No, I can't. I, I do have to use... Can I blow up any asteroids? It did say brown ones. I mean, they're all brown, but I guess it means the browner, browner ones. Like this. Wow! Okay. Where are the enemies? There they are. Oh! friends. I know I called you enemies just in the previous sentence, but oh, but I now consider you friends. If you just stay, stay with me. I think the best thing to do when they get really close to you is actually just let them pass, because they, I think you get into that kind of loop of, uh, I'm flying upwards and they're flying upwards. We're both trying to get each other in our in each other's sights, and it's uh, you're kind of stuck in a in a loopy loop. 
Hello, which are brown? Is this brown? They're all brown. Small ones, I guess. This one. No, it's bouncing off. That's a brown one. Is it not? Yep, yeah, it is. Right. Where is the ship? It's there. Got him. Got him. Oh! That's fun. They definitely sort of fly around a little bit, these guys. Kind of glitch out slightly. Does this weapon work on them, or is it only only the big boy gun? Or girl. Or big girl. No, that does not work, seemingly. That's fine. Right, is this uh, a destructible? Yeah. Oh! Oh, God. Oh, it's frustrating. Okay, but this is my fight. This is the last wave, isn't it? That I oh, Jesus Christ. Um this up. Fortunately, later on in the game where we do more of this flying, I don't remember them having shields and having to use the the big rocket weapon in order to defeat them. That does not that does not ring any bells, so we're not likely to have to repeat this. If they just not stay so close to me, it'd be way easier. Can I please just have a bit of space? Right. Let them come into a sort of... Whoa! Mm -hmm. That's a view it there. They definitely are not traveling in, in regular paths at times. Right, there's a gun. I can hear him. I can hear him around me. There they are. See, I just need more space. Like, my 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 weapon is not homing in on them because I'm too close. It doesn't have enough space to arc around. Whereas, like that, I think it does. Although they're, they are evading it still. Oh, do not fly into the pack like that. It's horrible. Right, here we go. Okay. Let's just do it very carefully, one at a time. Oh my god. What would be nice if I could... Maybe if it, like... It should just let you do it so that... As long as you shoot them... Shoot each one of them with one of those rockets. That's all you need to do. And, like, that... Like, one rocket will take down their shield. Oh, oh I shouldn't have done that. That was really... I knew that was going to happen. And I was like, oh, I really want to take this rock, this this meteor down because I've, I've started chipping away already. Should have been patient. Come round for another pass. Uh, so, those be whips. Thank you to Kirani. Happy anniversary, you beautiful people. Oh, you've got 12, 12 months there on your sub. Well done. Good for you. Thank you very much for being with us for a whole year. Where are these flipping ships? We're just looping round each other. I'm getting... I'm Honestly, I'm getting really... This is, like, really boring. Tedious. This is not good game, game design. This game definitely tried to do too much, and they're, therefore... Flipping heck. They weren't able to perfect a lot of things. You know, if you're sp spinning too many plates, none of them are going to be spinning that well. I can just hear them like passing, passing over me, and I know that like I don't want to, I don't want to do any big loops because I'll just fly into their path without knowing where they are. They're really close to me again. I don't know if I loop around too much, I'll just crash into one of them. Right, there we go. 
And then I run out of gun. And I have to blow up another flipping asteroid. Let's do a little quick save there because I'm not doing this again. Oh, I've just missed the flipping thing now. I can't even see. I, I didn't know where the thing was. There it is. I did that save. Guys, please. No, don't, don't just circle around me like that. I hate it. Right there. Doing all right here. Well, that was a that was a scary save. Okay, okay. Right, good. Oh, that's not the right gun. Quickly blow up another asteroid. Are there any ones nearer than any of these? These are all far away. I don't like it. TP will be saying Unholy War doesn't have a compelling story next. Hey. Unholy War has a great story. No, it doesn't, it doesn't have a great story. It's got good lore, though. I really like the world building of Unholy War. Friend, please. Right. There we go. There we go. Flip me. We made it. Right. Uh, so, Kieran E89, thank you. Happy anniversary, you beautiful people. 12 months. Thank you very much. Techi Weo for 15 months. That's a long time. That's over a year. So, seemingly, if I just close the emulator and, and resume it again. Oh, that gets rid of that line. I like it. That's great. That's brilliant. Uh, oh, it looks like we're on the right planet as well because we've got a purple, purple pointer. We made it, everyone. Thank the, the good lord and the bad one. Uh, Techi Weyo, thanks for subscribing by Twitch Prime for 15 months. That's a long old time there. No message, but, uh, and also, uh, v v v v Via Victusoman. Oh, I must have said that wrong, but hey, I hope. I hope I wasn't far off. Uh, hey, TP and the Walrus Clan, I hope you're all well. Did you hear Sony is closing the store on PS3? I didn't hear that. It doesn't affect me so much uh, because I am, don't have a PS3 but that's sad news for a lot of people. Sorry to hear that. Sorry for your loss PS3. We made it. Thank goodness. Now I actually want some I mean it's at least put me in the mood for some platforming. Oh wow she's just here. I thought we were going to have to like make our way to her in some way but I guess we've done flipping enough to get there right? What was she doing here? Why was she at the North Pole? Chess? Has she died? Back in the ship. Now if I have to blow up three more waves of shielded <laughs> fighters, I am going to scream. Oh. I can't leave you for two seconds, can I? <laughs> wow, where did you get this ship? Well, it's a long story. Hey, I found the mountain in my dream. What? Where is it? A long way from here. But I was there, and I rang the bell. What happened? Well, uh, nothing. Oh, Haven. It's okay. Anyway, what are you doing all the way out here? I didn't tell you before because you were so set on finding your mountain. But I found this in the Overlord's castle. I overheard the Overseer talking about it. It is meant to show where they manufacture the antidote. Oh. I thought that if we could find the antidote refinery, we could take as much of it as we like, and we would never need to be slaves again. The only problem is that it led me here into the middle of nowhere. Well, maybe it isn't on this planet. Not on this planet? Are there other planets out there? Where do you think I've been all this time? Now, let's see if I can attach that device to the ship. So she just went to the coordinates, assuming it was her planet. There you go. Seems to be indicating a planet very near to the sun. 
I need to go back to the Mount of Size, but when help arrives, we can go and investigate. No, Haven, we need to go now. We need more antidote, and then we're free. Uh oh. Well, let's get out of here. Uh oh. We'll drive, and I'll try to keep them at bay. But just head straight up. More ships have arrived. All right, let's get rid of that that little art of art attack there. Oh, if only I'd known this remedy from the beginning. <laughs> okay. This is easily done, he says. But, you know, you just... Just wait till they come in your crosshairs. Some of them are out of reach. I've got, like, an invisible... Well, not an invisible wall, but I can only reach... Like, I can't reach... There we go. I will probably now have to blow up some more ships in space in order to get enough uh... wow yeah in order to get enough um, boost but you know again hopefully as long as they don't have uh... the shields that can only be blown up with asteroid guns then uh, yeah it's not so bad You can make real quick work of them, short work of them, if, if you sort of know what you're doing. Oh, but do I know what I'm doing is the question. If you keep quite close to them, I don't think they really come out of this. Or they, I guess they do there, but like... They don't sweep around and come and attack you if you're following them on that straight so they, they end up going on like a, these straight runs away from you like that hello mine what are you doing are you just floating around me like that so you've already done two waves it's way easier when there's not some silly extra requirement you get them running away from you like this and if you stay with them they don't really pull out of it for a while. They're trying to get some distance from you before they make the maneuver, I think. So, if you try and stay close, <laughs> that's it. It's as quick as that. Um, Trialing Badger says, Hey, woman who's never even considered there are other planets, fly my spaceship. <laughs> I mean, maybe... It Whoa, hello. I I'm guessing this is probably the antidote refinery. <laughs> This heavily, heavily, heavily fortified. Am I, am I, what's my objective? Obtain plasma missiles by destroying the enemy craft. Destroy comms array core with plasma missiles. Okay. Plasma missiles are, again, the, the big boy, like, rockets that I was using before but uh oh that's a shield but again it shouldn't be too taxing at the moment hello you guys are so far away I can't even you're out of range right is that plasma plasma rockets right no it's not do I have to just keep Keep blowing them up until I can get the, the right rockets. What's this? Maybe this, maybe these are plasma rockets. Enemy ships, right? Destroy enemy craft. Okay. Maybe it only works. Maybe only the right type of craft. I might have to destroy this whole wave and then wait for like some other sort to arrive. Uh, okay, that looks right. So, yellow. Do I just attack the entire station or the big obvious weak point in the middle, perhaps? Let's try that. See if its health bar goes down. Bang, 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 bang. That. Oh, that's working. Okay. Oh, yikes, it zaps you. Don't like that. 
They made some sick patterns in the sky with these mines. Big fan. Hey, very distant spaceships. Please can I blow some of you up until I get the right kind of... It's just pure random... No, see, that's not right. That's a shield. I may as well have that. Sadly, the shield doesn't protect you from if they just crash into you directly. Oh, is it the, always the last craft? Oh, yikes, that's a big mine very near to me. Uh, maybe the... It's always the last one has the plasma missile, perhaps. I'll just try, though, just in case. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, oh no, I just grabbed a different weapon on top of the one I had. It's overwritten it. Let me just try. See if... No, that doesn't... Oh, that doesn't damage it, I don't think. Oh, uh, yeah, that's the other thing. You can, like, overwrite whatever weapon you've got by picking up another one. So I've got double rockets now instead of plasma missile. This game, is, it's kind of, I feel like it's letting me down. It's like showing me up, you know, like I said, I've, I've been saying like, hey, this game's actually really good and, you know, more people should play it. And hey, I'm going to show it to everyone. And if not for the bad ending, this game is kind of, kind of cool. And <laughs> there's no hiding the fact that I'm kind of bored. But hey, we'll get through it together, everyone. Uh, got two ships left. Oh, please, no, stop. Okay, this one is a big plasma rocket. Okay, so go towards the yellow target, which is over here. Oops, didn't mean to do that. And I got it down to less than half health with a full set of plasma rockets before, so we should be able to do it properly. Here. Oh, okay. What now? Oh, and now we can move on. Right. Well, this game seems to work in threes, so we've probably got one more thing to do, and then uh, we'll be where we want to be. Who is flying all these ships? I'm confused about who the baddies are, says Charlie Badger. The baddies are just... They're just... Um, like soldiers, like Vetch's soldiers and stuff, like his his military corps. Oh no, we've made it to where we need to be, that's good. No more. No more blowing stuff up. Oh, I, I spoke too soon, look at my map. Looks like I've got more things to blow up here. this. Yeah, they really, they really missed a trick here. Oh, can I just fly to this thing straight away? This looks like where I'm supposed to be going, right? Can I just go there? Rather than, like, have to... Get plasma missiles destroying the enemy craft, destroy three click and generates with plasma missiles. Do I actually have to though is the question. This seems like my target. Surely I can just land here, right? Can I? Will I? May I? I mean, without crashing into it. Let's just get it done. It's not too tricky, actually. Just roll out of the way of these stationary guys. Blow up the, the enemy ships to get plasma missiles. That's a shield, but fine. I'll have it.
At least these guys leave a little smoky trail. It's just slightly easier to keep track of where they are. I think I just blew one up and I immediately pulled away so I can't see where it is. Okay, here we go. Swoop. Looks like it takes about nine or ten of these missiles to blow up one of those. So, if I'm economical, I'll only have to get plasma missiles a couple of times, hopefully. Making my way to the next one. I'm actually, this is me going full speed. This is me boosting. If I let go of the X button, this is how, we, how fast we normally travel. So, that's fun. Oh! Is this the nearest one? Probably is, actually. Let's go over here. We're nearly there. Yeah, so if if what if they wanted this much flying in this game, they should have just spread it more evenly. Like, they could have done some of this right at the start, then left a big gap, and then done more of it later. You know, we, I don't mind... I wouldn't have minded if there was this much dogfighting um, in the game in its entirety, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten, I'll do it. I've still got some left. Oh, stay alive. Didn't have to blow up any anything over there. Just went straight for the thing. Still got like one or two shots in my uh, current set of, of plasma rockets, whatever they're called. Um, yeah, they could have done this much dogfighting spread throughout the game, you know? Not not just on this much of it back to back. And this thing should just fly faster. It should just fly way faster than it does. I'm pretty sure that towards the end of the game when we there is a a part of the game where you can fly around the entire solar system if you want to and go looking for the secret collectibles for the end of the game. Where's this? I'm right on top of it by the looks of it. Hello? Oh, there it is. One, two, three, four. Okay, I've done three or something there. Du, 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 du. Uh, yeah, when we get to the bit where you can explore the entire solar system, if, I'm, if you want to. It's not compulsory. Uh... I'm kind of... I, I do have the feeling that you don't... You're not in the Sun Surfer, which is this ship. I think you're actually in a different one. Okay, good. We've done it. Which I guess is now sort of... Oh, okay. There we go. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, I think you're in a different ship. Whether it's any faster is a completely different story. It might still be a slow one. the refinery. Now, according to what I overheard at the castle, there should be a transport ship at the far end of the refinery. I'll go and try and find it. You make sure the antidote gets pumped across to it. Try and find a way into the refinery. Once you're in, set the valves on the pipes to allow it to flow. Wow. You sure had this all planned out. What? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not just a pretty face, you know. <laughs> now, are you sure you can pilot this ship? I think I've got the basics. Now, let's go. Well, I'll meet you at the far end. Yes, Chess. Thank you. <coughs> Um, oh, it's a lava boat. Okay, at least we're in a different vehicle now. So what do I... I look, looks like I've still got to do... Okay, clip five cogs. Okay, that's fine. So I can go in the lava. Can I go in the green water? Yes, I can. There are blue things on my map. There are five of them. I'm guessing they are cogs. Oh, look. Here we go. Oh. Oh. Uh, right. Oh, do I have to lead it... Lead this thing's torpedoes make them crash it into its own thing maybe or maybe I can just fly up and, and bash it myself I don't know uh, yeah there we go uh, what was I going to say there oh yeah yeah if, if you're wondering why some of it seems a bit not 
not Mary Sue as such, but like chess seems to be a bit kind of like, whoa, you, you, as much as you say you don't know what you're doing and you act like you don't know much, you seem to know a lot. And um, we, we learn more about chess later on in the game. Oh. Uh, which kind of explains a bit more of, of like, you know, how she's, you know, she's got a, a good plan in place now and maybe would even explain why she doesn't seem to know that other planets exist, but then she's able to fly a spaceship. Like, the um, that might just be a plot hole or a, a kind of a, a silly bit of dialogue that shouldn't be in there. But, yeah, we, we find out more about Chess. Where's this? Where's this last one? Oh, don't get me. Don't do it. I'm looking on the map, and it's like, up. Do I have to ride something up the way? Do I have to get up there? Oh, look at this. This thing here goes all the way up, I think. Yeah, we've got to go up here. Okay. How much antidote have I got? Because I feel like I've not picked up. I'm missing all of these. 17. Oh, God. Okay. Oh, it's a bit slippery, this... Uh, this area. My handling's changed. Here we go, the last one. Oh, steady. Biff. Got all the cogs. Wah! We made it. So now we can open this gate and probably do some actual walking around on foot finally. That'd be nice. Uh, Unforgiven Chaos, thanks for subscribing. Welcome to the Warus Clan. Subscribe via Twitch Prime. Why not? Rightly so. Do it. You should all be doing that if you can, if you'd like to. Thank you very much. Um, I'm just going to check I didn't miss anything else earlier. No, I don't think so. Oh, looks like we're still actually... I'm going to pause the game. We're still in a vehicular section, but I'm sure we'll be getting out soon. Outrun the torpedo and locate the landing bay. Will do. Uh, Steven Skodas asks, Have you thought of any games to stream after this one? Yeah, I've, there's many that I'd like to do. Uh, it's just a, a question of, like, choosing. Choosing. Oh, steady. This is scary. Whoa! Oh, this is fun, though. Oh, this is... I like this. This is cool. See, this game really does things right at times. Other times it doesn't. Does it matter if I hit these things? Is that okay? Oh! Oh! <sighs> Oh, no. Oh, hit a mine. Oh, I think they're instant death mines, these. Oh, God. Oh, they're not instant death mines, but they slow you down enough that the torpedo probably hits you every time. Which is okay. We can deal with this. Um... What will I be streaming next? Uh, Mills Derp suggests Toy Story. Oh, flip. Got to watch out for that one. Uh, Toy Story. Now, normally... So, Toy Story has definitely been one that's been suggested and that I've thought about. I would actually... I prefer to stream a PS1 game if I'm going to do a retro-ish game rather than PS2. Because this PS2 emulator is not great um, in terms of, like, graphical issues. You know, we've seen plenty of it in Haven. Uh, we had it when I tried to do Beyond Good and Evil... Uh, obviously, when we, when Ben and I did Time Splitters Future Perfect as well, have I made it? Jump out, Haven. Jump. Oh. So it's really temperamental, and some games. So you might just be like, oh, I'll just use the right settings, but like some games don't seem to have correct settings at all. You know, they just don't seem to work properly. Um, but. Huh, Uh, but, yeah, so so if I do PS1 game, I'd like... If I do a, another old, oldie-style game, it would be nice to do a PS1 one. Uh, uh, PS1 one. But, oh! Oh, wow, you jump right over, the, over those if you do a full flip there. Uh, only thing is, I've not actually, would you believe, played Toy Story 2 uh, all the way through. I played the demo of it, and I 
played a couple of levels at like a friend's house, but I never actually owned it. Um, I know how good it is though. As I say, I have I have played it. I've just not. Oops, played it in full. Sorry, I'm being a being a big dum dum. Uh, so uh, normally I like to stream games where I played them in full, and therefore I'm not going to be spending too much time wandering around going, oh, what, where do I, you know, what do I do next, or how do I, how do I defeat this boss, or, you know. Um, that said, clearly, here I am playing a game that I I do, I do. Oh, come on. I do know well. I'm illustrating the point exactly that I'm trying to make here. Uh, I know this game well enough, or I've played it plenty of times, but you do spend a lot of time flailing around. Hello? Have I just not got the the doppelsprung correct? Have I sort of forgotten how to do it properly? Maybe that's it. Maybe it's not the game. Maybe it's me. Oops. It's the children who are wrong. That's better. Yeah, I think I was sort of jumping wrong. It's been that long since I've been wandering around on foot. That's why. So anyway, yeah, Toy Story 2. It's certainly not a no from me, but... And I, I know it's not a super difficult game. It's more of a collect-a-thon than anything else. But, uh... So, you know, I, w I would absolutely consider that. Um, outside of that, in terms of games I... I'd already kind of thought of that I'd like to maybe play. What is this? Oh, it's a rolly ball one. I like these. So we've got to keep the uh, keep grabbing enough blue energy quick enough so that the ball doesn't run out. This is pretty close to um, what we're going to be doing if we go for the uh, for the black diamonds, which is the the end game, how to unlock the bonus ending stuff. So we've done this rolling stuff before, but even just in terms of like the actual layout, this is the sort of thing you can expect. Going through thin bits. You don't have to like press buttons, you just have to get through the through the course. But uh Yeah, like broken broken bits like this, or or bumpy bits. Is that gonna save the fact that I press one button? Maybe? I don't know. Not sure. Oops. Um, but uh, yes, um, the other thing. That's Bird Boy. I'm trying to, I'm trying to read the Bird Boy Duff. I think. Yes. Hope you're having a lovely day. Thank you for subscribing for six months now. Much appreciated. That stinger there is the one from Dishonored, isn't it? Is it the exact one? You know when someone sees something, sees you do something in Dishonored. Bloom! Oh, let's see if this button's been pressed already. I don't think it has. I think I have to do it all in one. Oh, it has been. Okay, well, at least we know that now for next time. I do. I, I quite enjoy these these super monkey ball <laughs> segments. They are quite fun. They're, they're tricky, but they are enjoyable to do. Uh, so games that I was thinking of streaming myself. In fact, let me just check. I've not missed a view it above Bird Boy Duff. Hope you're all having a lovely day, says Bird Boy Duff. Thank you very much. Um, I don't think I did. Unforgiven Chaos, I said, didn't I? Yeah. Uh... Yeah, Dishonored stole it from Haven. Confirmed. No, it's probably from some sort of um, library, like sound library that you can just pay for as a video game developer or a publisher or whoever. You can just use it yourself. There's a, In fact, there's a, a piece of music. I think it's called like Manhattan Chase. Something about Manhattan that's used in loads of things. It's the Gulps Overlook boss battle music in Spyro 2. It's in the Spider-Man, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man video game adaptation, the first Spider-Man. Uh, it is in, oh, it's in so many things. I wanted to do a video about it, actually. Um, like a, like before Triple Jump, maybe even before video. So it's something I've always wanted to like look into. Like all the things that use this. You would know it if you heard it. You would honestly, you would, you would know it. You would 
definitely recognize it from something. I think they use it on, like, American TV as well sometimes. Um, it's very recognized. It's like the Wilhelm scream of stock music. Uh, it's called, like, Chase Through Manhattan or something like that. Oh, this is cool, this level. I like this. Uh, JT Destroyer, thank you for subscribing. Uh... Been sub for 20 human months, that's 140 dog months, or 11.6 dog years. Wow. Thank you very much. Uh, I will eventually talk about how, uh, uh, about the games I was thinking of playing other than Toy Story 2 after this game. I'll talk about them now if I can get through it without digressing. I once had a really, really... You know how I was about to talk about those games. I just want to talk about the fact that I once had a really vivid, weird dream. Like a proper fever dream. Cheese before bedtime dream. Um, that partly included this level from Haven. Even though I'd not played it in years at the time. Whoa! This like bit where all the lava waterfalls go into a central point. I had a dream that like... Started out... I was, like, in this empty shopping mall. It was, like, it wasn't abandoned. It was just closed. And it was sort of dusk outside. And there was this National Geographic, like, newsstand uh, that I was, like, look... I was trying to find if there were copies of National Geographic there that I could, like, I could have a look at. And there weren't. So then I went, went out into the street, and there was this old woman who was walking... She was walking three pigs... On, a, on leads, and they had really long snouts. This old woman, she's just walking them along like dogs. Uh, and then I went uh, into a restaurant, an Italian restaurant, and there, there were these two waiters who came, and they brought to our table just a giant bowl of balsamic vinegar <laughs> and placed it in the middle of the table. Don't think they gave us any... Whoa! You can jump over there if you're fast. Let's land in the crucible. A giant bowl of balsamic vinegar. They didn't give us any bread to dip into it, I don't think. Just a big bowl of it. Um, and then we went into the back room of this restaurant, and it was this. <laughs> uh, really crazy dream. And it was so... It's the most vivid, weird, strange dream. And it was so weird and vivid that when I woke up in the morning, I remembered every detail of it really, really strongly. And I still do. It's like... Ugh, come on, Haven. There you go. Yeah, it's the most vivid dream I've ever had, or certainly the one I remember the strongest of all dreams. Uh, and it wasn't even a nightmare. Normally, it's nightmares you remember that strongly. But um, I don't know what I was on at that time. But that's the dream I had. How big was the bowl, says Stephen? It was as big as... It was nearly as, as big as the table. It was, like, way, way bigger than a dinner plate. It was, um, like, the size of a... A round shield or something, you know? It was that big. Oh, I keep forgetting that that's there. Oh, I made it. We're through. Down here we go. Right, games. <laughs> what games are we going to play after this? So, ooh, oh, hello. Oh, six skills. But will I run out of energy is the question. Oh, I didn't see that coming. I'm not looking ahead. Blim! Dishonored. So there are games that I know I want to play on stream at some point. They're not necessarily the next game, but I want to finally play Halo 3, as I've said before. It's kind of the reason I played Halo 1 and 2, is so that I can play Halo 3 on stream. I keep forgetting that this hole is here. I will remember next time. Um, so Halo 3 is there. I'd like to play Condemned Criminal Origins. Um, that might be something that if I can bring myself to to wait, it might be better waiting until the spooky month, which I know is a long way away. Either that, or I could see if once we're back in the office, maybe it's something that me and Ben could play on stream together. Um, and maybe, you know, I would have to be in control of the game. Because it's a bit like, it's, that, it's like Outlast in a way. It's that kind of vibe. So I think he, it might be quite fun to, to play that together and for him to have to watch me playing it. Pretty spooky, jump-scary game. 
Um, so Condemned, Criminal Origins is one I want to play. Uh, people kept voting for Spyro 2, PS1 version. I know I've played a lot of Spyro, and I've, I've sort of been hoping that you know there will be other games I can play in the meantime. But it is it does keep coming up very, very high in my polls. Um, it pretty much tied with Haven, I think, and whatever the last game I played was as well. I think it, it was pretty much tied with. Um, so, oh man, it continues. I mean, I don't really mind, because this level design is really cool looking. I was going to say, when I had my dream, it wasn't just lava waterfalls. There were like green acid ones as well. Oh man, it's like an even harder level here. Um, so yeah, Condemned. Wow, the shortcut. Big fan. I've got to take the long way back, I think. Um, so Spyro 2 is there, because people seemingly want me, want me to play it. Spyro 2 on PS1. Um, what else? Um, Dishonored! Maybe Dishonored. That would be fun. I really like Dishonored. I've never actually completed it, would you believe? Which is a shame. It's been out for a long time, and I played it several times. I've restarted it and really enjoyed it. I love the world building there. You know, the the, the whale punk, as it became known. Um, really cool aesthetic. And, you know, I love all the powers and the, the freedom to, you know, complete the levels in whichever ways you want. Um really cool game so maybe that I would play at some point uh, of course I feel like at some point I should return to the adventures of Normie Nobday the normal nobody um, I'd certainly like to and definitely when like a new custom character RPG game comes out that I want to play so if and when the next Elder Scrolls becomes available on PC uh, or, which, you know, could be years away. Uh, I'll definitely be playing that as, as Normie. Um, and, you know, in the meantime, I could definitely play, like, Fallout and can maybe go back to Skyrim, play more Skyrim, maybe maybe try Oblivion. Uh, so do more games with Normie. That could be fun. Uh, I know some people were saying Ratchet and Clank in the chat earlier. I could play Ratchet and Clank. Um, you know... I like Ratchet and Clank. I'm not like as much of a fan of that as I am Spyro and Crash and stuff. So, are we here? Is this where we're supposed to be? Oh boy! Shit! Does this mean I've done the valves? Is that what those buttons were? Me like making so the valves were. Whoa! So I guess we've loaded this thing up now with uh, with antidote. Let me just quickly get rid of the artifact. This is an artifact. Yeah, we made it. Your plan worked. I don't believe it. I thought we had it for sure. Well, how did you remember all that stuff about the pipes and the transport ship? You're amazing, and you're doing a great job of piloting this thing. Well, th these are complicated ships. Uh, I wouldn't have a clue how to start it, let alone get it off the ground. In fact, I'm very surprised we aren't being shot out of the sky as we speak. But how did you manage to bypass the security systems? Oh. Well, you know, I did have a little help. <gasps> well done, my dear girl. He never suspected a thing. Jess? It's for the best, Haven. So, Haven. You caused me quite a bit of trouble, young man. It's only thanks to your friend here that I managed to keep track of you. She's not my friend. Oh, what's up with his eyebrows? No, I don't suppose she ever was. Oh. She was assigned to your village many years ago. She has always been keeping an eye out for individuals with, let us say, an active imagination. I have been taking a keen interest in you ever 
ever since your so-called dream started. And your chess here has been leading you astray at every turn. You were foolish to trust her, and even more foolish to leave the Mount of Sighs. Chain him up. Yeah. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. Potato Shack, thank you for the bits there. 200 blips. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, I knew that was coming. I remembered that was coming. So that is why she doesn't know about other planets. She can't fly spaceships. Well, she can fly spaceships, but like, you know, she acts like she doesn't really know what's going on. That's why she was out in the middle of the Arctic um, when Haven was ringing the bell and she called him away. Yeah. Hello, Peter. How are you doing? Big traitor. How is Amy? I hope you are well. Lots of love to you both. Had to do the school run today with a frozen shoulder. So very oh, no. tired, so we'll chill out watching with the lovely Walrus Clan. Thank you, Sammy love Watson. Love you all, friends. Oof, sorry. So, thank you, Sammy Watson, name for the blips there. Uh, I'm very well, thank you, and I, I hope your frozen shoulder unfreezes soon. Man, I bet, I bet that is tiring. Um, yeah, sorry, everyone. Check, checkmate. Very good, Lord Rotovich. I like that. We got chest. Oh, I paused right at the end of a stream, uh, end of a cutscene. So we left the amount of size we weren't supposed to. Um, chest has been a traitor. This is Vetch's city here, or fortress, or whatever. Uh, and that's a view it from Madster Dactyl. Thank you, Madster Dactyl, for subscribing again. Especially as our uh, it seems mod. It sounded the golden voice. Ordinarily, this would be bad, very bad. But according to my plan, you didn't stay in the safety of the Mount of Size. You see, the legend is very clear. Athelion will return to help his people if the bell is rung. But he will return first to the one who rang the bell. I am powerless at the Mount of Sighs, oh. and had you stayed put, he would have returned, and I couldn't touch him. But you didn't stay there, did you? So, he will have to come here to my seat of power. Oh no. You. He is out of his depth here. I have more power here than he yeah. could possibly Happy imagine. 420 BBBB Blaze it my dudes Lord BR16 Dab. I'm a busy boy setting up my new computer. I'm finally in the late 2010s PC wise so here are some chess jokes I chose them before. Oh brilliant. Chess turned heel. Why wouldn't the cowboy play chess? He was afraid he would lose his horse. Ha ha ha. Great. What do chess players like to eat? Chestnuts. He he he. Excellent. Where do you get more chess pieces? At the pawn shop. Ha ha ho. Ha ha ho. Oh, ho. Why did the chess grandmaster go to Prague? To see his checkmate. Who who who? Who who who? Moggy chess master. Fantastic. Lobrotovich, thank you very much. Blaze it, everyone. It's the sex number, my dudes. Um. I have been waiting for this moment for millennia. And I have you and Chess, of course, to thank. No. Oh yes. No. And I'm sure he will be thrilled to know yeah. how you couldn't be 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 blaze it, my dudes. Blaze it. Blaze it. What's happened to? Why is Haven so low res all of a sudden? Is it because there's lots of models and stuff in these cutscenes? Did they have to sort of cut down on? His eyebrows are really weird, and they've not been like that before. Look how, how, look at the poor resolution on his face, facial texture. Instruction. His downfall is all thanks to you. Now enough. Yes, I would look the other Stephen, way thank you. for a second. For the blips. This could be messy. Wait, we had a deal. You said you wouldn't kill him. Anyway, what use is he dead? Oh, it doesn't matter if he's dead or not. He just needs to be here. Well, most of him. No! Now, don't go all emotional on me. Compassion is so unbecoming. You monster! Oh, really? 
just when you are showing so much potential. No. Oh. Well, I would hate to keep you two apart. So you can die together. Yes. What is it? Reports of an intruder within the Citadel. Oh. We, are, we are unable to stop him. He's here. The king has been called. Ah, uh, do come in. Make yourself at home. Oh my god, things are... Oh, look at... Vetch's got a it's tail. Alien. It's a trap. It's all my fault. I'm sorry. He seems pretty confident. Having a little conversation. Well, there seems to be a slight change of plan. Athelion has kindly decided to surrender as long as I spare your lives. How very brave. How noble. How pathetic. Your compassion for each other is laughable. Guards, take them down to the cells. Bring Athelion to my ship. We leave at once for the Mount of Size. <gasps> oh. Oh man. So we've been locked up. Fetch has oh, a I'm sorry. I didn't believe all that stuff about the legend and everything, and I really needed to help Vetch. How can you need to help someone like that? Look, I'm sorry, okay? Hey, this door isn't locked. To anyone who thinks that is um, a, a, a stupid coincidence, like, oh, well, that's lucky. I think it's like Athelion's influence. Athelion is kind of a mythical, he's not just some guy. Like, he's seemingly thousands and thousands of years old because he was around before Vetch turned up, and Vetch has been the, the dictator for millennia. So he's apparently almost immortal. Also, the Mount of Size itself makes Vetch powerless, so there's some kind of mythical, you know, it's like it's like the force or something, so I think Athelion's presence made it so that that thing well, was unlocked. get me out then. I, I can't open it. Look, I have to try and help Athelion. I'll come back and get you. Sure you will. Hey, well you can trust me. Unlike other people I could mention. I'll see you soon, I promise. Oh, he just froze on the edge of this cutscene there. Brilliant. This is it, I think this is us jumping into the ship. And we then have the freedom to explore the world, if we wish. Look, no one's... No one's stopping us. Man, he's pretty ugly, isn't he, at times, this character. Whoa. That is, I guess, the ship that Vetch is in. Why is everything gone so... There's something going on here. I don't know why all the textures have gone low res all of a sudden. <laughs> well, only some of them have. It's weird. I don't, let's just not worry about it. I think it might be the scope of some of these cutscenes, maybe. So it, it makes some of the textures lower res for, like, big-time cutscenes, possibly. I don't know. I don't know. I really enjoy the ship design, says Charlie Badger. Me too. They're fantastic. They're done by a guy called Rodney Matthews. Rodney Matthews did all the concept art for this game. He did all the tech design and characters and the enemies and stuff. The architecture. Really, really cool stuff. Oh, there's something funny going on with these cutscenes. Uh, and uh, he also... I mentioned this in the, in the previous Haven stream, I think. Oh, 
might. We've got one of these fighters now. Maybe they're a bit faster than the Sun Surfer. Uh, he also designed uh, the world and characters of a, a stop-motion TV show um, that was kind of sci-fi, fantasy, or oh, really a really charming little little show. Right. So yeah, this is it. This is oh, it is faster. It's much faster this ship. So we're now up in space. There's no music playing. There it is. And yeah, this is it. So now, if I show you this. Uh, we have to blow up. I think it might actually just be... I don't know if it's just one wave at a time. Oh, this ship is vastly superior to the Sun Surfer. Maybe it's still three waves. It could be. But... So actually, now, if I if I go where I'm supposed to go in terms of the primary objective... Okay, yeah, it's still three waves, but that's fine. Uh, it'll be the end of the game. The the initial ending of the game. So we'll try and do that, actually. Well, that's what I'll do first, because you can go back and replay levels to unlock the secret ending later. Assuming people want to see that. But, uh... This truly is. Um, this is the No Man's Sky bit. This is it. So. Love those boys. And then this final wave. And you'll see exactly what is available to us. Wave number three. So now we it goes takes us into this mode, and we can like point at a planet, Ferra, zero out of two. It's green for some reason. Uh, Aurea, zero out of two. Uh, Exarco, zero out of one. Green. I don't know what those. Oh, I know what they mean. So. So these are our rune stones that we've got. I think we're only missing a couple. We need Darkwater Village, which can't be that hard to get. Darkwater Castle, that's probably a bit more of a, an extensive one. Isle of Heroes are just for doing challenges perfectly. The boat race, I believe, is not easy. And then we've got all of the others. So, I think if it's green or red, that is telling us that we've got the rune stones associated with that planet. So, Exarco 0 out of 1 means there is one uh, rune tower somewhere on that planet, could be anywhere, um, for us to visit. Uh, and we do a challenge when we get to the rune tower, and for doing that we get a black diamond. And I think... So it's and on that planet there's only one available. And I think if it's green, it means that we have already collected the rune stone that will unlock that rune tower. Whereas if it's red, which some of them are, I think that means that uh, we don't have the runes associated with that planet to allow us to open the rune towers. Or maybe we've only got one of them, but not both of them or something. So, yeah, that's how it goes. So... But what I'll do first is I will try and walk to uh, the planet where the Mount of Size is. And I don't want to get this wrong, because what you actually do have to do now is basically search. You have to scour the uh, the entire uh, Haven FAQ. <laughs> uh, you have to now scour the galaxy to find the right planet to go back to the Mount of Size. Um, 
what's it called? Finding Vetch. Finding. Oh, blame, blame. Finding Vetch. Just want this one to tell me which planet I'm going to. After uh, flying around again, uh, then choose Aurea. Yeah, I thought it might be Aurea. Or Aurea, whatever it is. So, if I can find it, it's a blue, it's, it's an Earth looking one. Hello? What's this? Aurea. So now we can just warp like this. You can choose any planet, and you will in real time watch it get closer and closer, and then you can just fly down into its atmosphere. You can do that with any of the planets in the entire solar system here, which is crazy. Real crazy. Oh, and I just saw the amount of size on the left as well. You do actually have to find find the, pl find the place as well. Oh, there he is. Look. Can shoot at him, seemingly, but I'm, that's not that's not what you're supposed to do. So this is it. This is going to be this is going to be the end of Haven. The 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 infamous ending. Jenny Kin says, "Tiny peeps, any suggestions for some applying for the presenting job? Uh, any tiny wisdom?" Not, not especially. We're not, as it says in the job ad, we're not looking particularly at your credentials or your qualifications. Um, obviously, like experience is is helpful in the sense that you can show us links to, you can send us links to like videos or Twitch streams or things that you've done, like presenting work. So it's experience. Experience is useful in the sense that it gives us something to look at as a kind of portfolio so that we can see whether you are what we're looking for but if you don't have any of that but you think you you genuinely would be a good fit and you you will be able to present um instead we're, we're we're equally open to just you putting a video together there's like a a, a pack of stuff available um i think or like a, a script i should say uh associated with the job ad that you can download and record it as a as a 10 point list um off the top of my head, I can't remember exactly what is and isn't asked for in that ad. Maybe it also says, oh, and please do a put together a little piece of your own or something. It might say that, it might not. But essentially, just show us that you are enthusiastic and that you're able to present, you know, whether you've done it before or not. We want to see um, video or hear audio or both. Again, as I say, look at the ad and see what is actually asked for. Don't just go off what I'm saying here in the middle of a stream. Um, but uh, we, we just want to see what you can do. I, I don't have any particular wisdom or, or advice. Just uh, do your very best. Um, and uh, we, we, we look forward to hearing from everyone. Um, and uh, we, as we said, I think we said on our, it was either in our live stream or our podcast last week, we really do want to hear from everyone. I don't want we would hate to think that um, people of certain demographics feel like, oh, maybe I shouldn't apply because of my age or of my my gender or of uh, my background in any way. Uh, or I would like to think no one's thinking because of my ethnic ethnicity or anything like that. But my point is, we certainly just going by the names of people who've already applied, one thing we can see straight off the bat is that there's an imbalance of, uh, of gender um, or certainly the genders you would typically, stereotypically associate with those names. Um, of course, people might not associate with those genders, but uh, it looks to us that more males than females have applied. Um, so we would encourage everyone to apply. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll take everyone on, of course, on their own merit. We're not going to like, that's not going to factor into our decision. But, uh, you know, people ask us, people ask us, hey, how come you don't have a lot of women working for you? For you? Or how come you don't have a lot of people of color working for you? And frankly, it come, as much as anything else, it comes down to the fact that, unfortunately, we don't seem to get a lot of applicants who, who fall into those, um, under th that umbrella of, you know, the, the diversity that we're, we'd love to uh, have here at Triple Jump and Cultaholic. Um, so please, whoever you are, whatever whatever you are in terms of gender background experience age you know as long as you're of working age please do uh, uh apply if you wish um because people ask us hey what's going on with that diversity there at triple jump just get rid of this uh, this artifact 
Um, hey, look, it's certainly not based on our decisions to employ or not employ people. It's mostly down to who applies. So please do apply, whoever you are. Um, there we go. Right, let me let me resume. Lucy B says, when it comes down to it, you should always hire the best person for the job. Gender or ethnicity aren't important. No, absolutely. That's I'm I'm reluctant to say like, hey, please apply no matter what your background is, because I don't want people to think that then like we are looking to like tick boxes because we're not. But the point is, it's not that we're like looking for for one of for someone who falls under that umbrella so that we can hire them to tick a box. It's that people the 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 pool of applicants is very limited even before we start looking at making decisions which is a shame you know and as i say we will then hire someone based purely on whether they're right for the job not on anything else but all the same we would like to encourage people to just in increase the diversity of that pool that's kind of that's what we're getting at um and then yeah we will just pick the best person for the job irrespective of that diversity because that's how these decisions should be made and legally speaking it's how they how they are made anyway so uh yeah i don't want anyone to think there's any any like what's the what's the term um prejudice positive or negative it's just uh we're just encouraging people to feel like hey i might not be the the typical white cis middle class british male that is currently a presenter mm -hmm. at T triple jump that that means nothing that means nothing at all uh do it if you want to you know here we go. That's not Vetch. That's Vetch's guard. Kilo Clouds with five gifted subs. You're a fool, Athelion. Do you actually think I'll spare the boy's life after I've killed you? Now, a single drop of this virus will be enough to kill you. So just to be sure... Oh no. Thelion. No. Athelion, he sacrificed himself, and Vetch is still gonna kill us anyway. No. Oh. No! Ha <laughs> ha! What a pleasant surprise! Athelion is dead. He cannot help you or your people now. So there is nothing to stop me from killing you, too. <gasps> and we now enter a quick time event for the final boss fight, just to let you know. Uh, I will also just address this boring loan. It says, Hi, Peter. Just your average white cis British male here. Not middle class, though. Am I still okay? Am I okay to be here? Of course, everyone is okay to be here and everyone is okay to apply as well. If you're a white cis British male in whatever sense, you're also, please do apply. I don't want to get anything confused or, or, you know, mixed up here. Everyone should apply, no matter who they are or, or what they are, as long as they think that, you know, they'd be good at the job and that they're qualified or, you know, have the have the, the talents to do so, which is being good at the job. That's Those two things are the same. Everyone can apply, no matter who they are. That's kind of the point I was making. But equally, you can apply if you're a white cis male, and if you're not, okay, have we got that? Is that is that cleared up? Good. Let's continue. Quick time event. Final boss. It's a rhythm action game. Look, I'll salute all of the new subs in a moment. Ah! Oh, he's gone invisible. Oh. Tell me, how does it feel, young fool? All that effort for nothing. Aphelion is dead, and even your best friend betrayed you in the end. You've lost everything. Well, I'm not defeated yet. Yes, I noticed that. Why can't you just have the common decency to die when I try to kill you? Ah, of course. You're still protected by 
the Mount of Signs. Strange. I thought with Athelion dead, his power would have faded also. No matter. Victory will still be mine. How? You can't kill me. No. So I'll just leave you here to die. You can't live forever. Unlike some of us. <laughs> Do you think he might be the baddie? This is it. This is it. The ending we all wanted and got from Haven Call of the King. Chained to a rock. Athelian dead. Vetch victorious. Playing this for the first time, you're expecting him to wake up or or Talon to arrive. For Vetch's ship to just spontaneously explode. Just get rid of that line. Those stupid dreams of yours. Stupid dreams of yours. Many of our people gave their lives. Many of our people gave their lives. You're mocking forces you couldn't possibly understand. Couldn't possibly understand. Haven, do you know what you're doing? Haven, do you know what you're doing? Haven, do you know what you're doing? Oh, pathetic. Pathetic. And I am him. And she thank. That's the end of the game there, everyone. I hope you all enjoyed it. That is, I mean... Wow. It's such a shame. So, as I've told... I, when I've talked about this game before many times. Uh, on the podcast and things like that. Um, the idea was, this yeah. was the first in a trilogy. Whatever you are in terms of gender, sexuality, ethnicity, or anything else, if you're part of... The Walrus Clan, your family, as far as I'm concerned. Big love to you all. Of course. That's a lovely thing to say, some kind of div, and it's true. Everyone's welcome here, both in the chat and on the staff. No matter who you are. Uh, so the idea was this game would be the first in a trilogy. And so they were I guess they were hoping that it would go down really well, but everyone would be like, Oh my god, it ended on such a cliffhanger! Please, we must get the sequel. And sadly, and mostly unfairly, um, it uh, it didn't happen. You know, certainly today in today's stream, I had a, I had a few issues with some of that space flight. There was a lot of it all in one go, and they should have just done less of it here and now, and more of it spread throughout. Um, and, you know, like the, the gladiator ball thing that I did in the previous stream also took took a while. But, honestly, for the most part, really fun game. Very, very cool design, like art design. Um, I know it looks a bit janky in terms of execution from time to time. But, you know, as uh, someone was saying earlier in the chat, the ship designs are awesome. The architecture, um, even things like just... Like, Athelion's clothes and Vetch's design. It's all really cool stuff. Um, and technologically speaking, look at this. Like, you could zoom in from where we are right now down to that island at the top of the planet, the Mount of Size, and Haven would be there. Like, this is all... It's a simulated solar system, which is just still mind-blowing to me that this was done on a PS2. Um, fantastic stuff. So, this game did so much right. Unfortunately, it didn't do everything right, and uh, you know maybe it came at a bad time as well. Sometimes games just don't do well because of um, turn it down a bit because of uh, just whatever zeitgeist there is at the time um, for you know, for various reasons. Um, so that's that's a shame, but you know, oh Deb Austin, well done Deb Austin, special thanks, great. Great name there, Deb. I like it. Um, Christina Wass. 
So let's see what happens now. Does it just bring us back to the front menu? There we go. Um, however, that's not quite, it's not quite the end of the game. I mean, it is. That is the end of the game. Do not at all get your hopes up that the little extra that we can unlock is going to give you any kind of closure whatsoever, because it it isn't. Uh, has it properly... Oh, oh no, that's bad. I know, it's okay. That was just my... Um... Oh, okay. Well, actually, what it's done there is not saved our game, but fortunately, I've got save states. Um, I don't know when my save state was, but it doesn't really matter. But um, oh, we could watch this. Actually, it's quite interesting. Uh, but yeah, there is there is something we can do to. There's more gameplay, and there is a little tiny extra nugget for the ending. Um, thank you to Billy and Weasley for subscribing for 12 months now. No message attached, but you know, much appreciated. Uh, and, um, good. Yeah, let's, let's pop the movie on. Uh, and what I will say, and in fact, let's watch this first. Some of this is from, like, the beta build, because it never made it to the final game. <laughs> Some of this footage. It's just a complete mix, um, of every, every type of game, shooting, flying vehicle, platformer, even elements of RPG. It's, it's, it's everything in one game. It's a morality tale in, in many ways. Um, it, it's the usual good versus evil, um, but really uh, one boy's quest to see if he could make a difference. He can't. He didn't make a difference. He might have done. The guy Haven really, he's a bit of an inventor. Across he's, three games. He's cool, he runs around, he jumps, he's very athletic. Um, he's a miner, he's been brought up that way. The art style is drawn from uh, uh, a guy called Rodney Matthews, who's uh, a very famous uh, artist based in the UK. Check out this concept art, look at this. Very, very closely uh, in the early stages of the project, and he was concepting um, characters, vehicles, worlds. He's a very, very well respected artist who has a very, very distinct style. In the driving seat of that boat hey, that you might have just seen there gaming. was the and travel. Freeform is basically something that allows the player. The Traveller's Tales creature. Gameplay genres in one package, and it's completely seamless. There's no other game that will allow you to do that. We really wanted to create something that would allow you to, to explore the darkest kind of castles and find the smallest trinkets and at the same time just jump into a spaceship and, and fly into orbit and look down on these planets. Oh, his jump Terrible animation games are always great games because they're, um, they're not mindless. You, you have to have a, a little bit of thought in there, a little bit of logic, because then it's just more fun. I wanted the player to constantly just be shocked at what happens next and just think this is cool i'm running around i've got a village i'm exploring acadia this is cool and suddenly wow there's this huge vista and there's planets in the sky the story has a very very sort of uh, film film based script to it it's very deep it has twists haven would make a great film it's an action adventure and there's lots of explosions and gee whiz moments as we call them oh i, I feel i feel so sorry for this team they're so enthusiastic about their game, and they knew that like they were doing some really cutting edge stuff, but it wasn't all it wasn't all done quite quite right. Such a shame. Such a shame. So the original protagonist for this game was actually the Traveller's Tales logo boy. Look at this guy. You know this guy? This guy here was actually gonna be the playable character in the game. And he was in I I've only just noticed for the first time, he's driving the boat in that concept art we just saw, which is kind of crazy. Um, uh, oh, Zero Hun, I missed yeah. your sub. I'm so sorry. I unfortunately have to leave for work. Thank you, as always, for the stream, TP. Oh, I see it. It was a lot of fun. See you all Thursday for the sleepover stream. Looking forward to talking to you and Ben for the Discord call. Steve Hope you oh. all have a wonderful day. Team TR5 Dick Salute. Stephen, thank you for the blips there. Thank you very much. Uh, just there on the left, that's one of the geoglyphs we have to find to get to the get to the tower. Uh, Zero Hun, sorry for missing your sub there. Uh, one year and what a year it's been. Thanks for all the content. 
just being awesome. Love you, boys. Thank you so much. What a year it has been. <laughs> That's certainly, there's no question there. Oh, and the gifted subs. Let me let me salute them. Big Bomb Theory 14, gifted by Steven Skodas. Thank you very much. It's your 93rd gift. And also, Kilo Clouds, those five went to Walk Whack, Jenny Kins, Shibbies, Narger Than Life, and Wobbly Pants. And that's um, your eighth gift so far in the channel. Thank you so much. Um, wonderful, wonderful stuff. So, uh, we did it. We did Haven. Um, now, where was my most recent save state? Uh, oh, we're in the wrong ship here. Okay, it might be something for me to catch up on outside of... Outside of the game. Yeah, I will. I will have to. Oh, look, there's one. Let me see if I can do it in the sun surfer. If I fly over to this one here. It might only work in, in the finding vetch part of the game, but it's possible that this will work. Let me just fly into the atmosphere, otherwise the... The turning of the earth means that the that the, they can actually get away from you. These uh, these things you have to like get through the atmosphere first, so it's not going to rotate away from you like that. So this is what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to walk to all the different planets, enter the atmosphere of them, which I've almost done here. Oh no, it's going to do a cutscene. That's a shame. But yeah, you have to get to those geoglyphs, and there's like towers that come out of the ground. Uh, so in my free time, what I will do is I will catch up on... I'll get us back to the Finding Vetch level where we have the freedom to fly around the, the solar system and maybe... I don't know. So next week, I, I might stream more Haven um, to show you what happens or or I won't. I'm not sure yet because it's it's a bit of a grind and if there were bits... Where, if I could like skip certain bits of it, just like flying around space and stuff and shooting ships, then I'd be quite happy to, to do it for a final little stream. But, um, you know, it, it's it's not... I don't know. I'll have to... I'll do it on my own time and see how viable it is as a stream. But uh, we'll see. Uh, uh, yeah, that's the only thing I was going to talk about. I may as well at this point switch back to full screen. So... The other interesting thing about this game that you don't, you might not notice at the time because it's quite subtle, but um, <laughs> it was actually designed as a bit of a Christian allegory, which it doesn't come across obviously at all. It's not in your face, but um, so I think John Burton, the guy who was kind of in charge of of the game at the time, I think he was director of Traveller's Tales at the time. Uh, came up with this idea where in the same way that the Chronicles of Narnia or the Line the Witch in the Wardrobe is actually a, a, like a it's kind of the gospel story in a way it's got like self-sacrifice and resurrection and stuff in it um, he wanted to do that and um, uh, Trowling Badger says subtle question mark and then like a, a boof squinty face I mean I, I didn't notice it when I was a kid obviously I see that like there's a guy who gets brought back from the dead, but I didn't think, oh, this is like, this is a Christian allegory. Um, it's set with, it's got like spaceships and stuff, and it's not, it's, I don't think it's, it's particularly obvious. Um, but uh, if you, if you like look into it, not only has he like lifted stuff from the Bible, but he's also lifted stuff from the line, the witch in the wardrobe, which itself is a Christian allegory. So uh, you've got, um, in the when we went to the Isle of Heroes, and the wise man was telling us some of the the backstory to the whole Vetch and Athelian thing, there was a human who betrayed. He was like on he was on Athelian's council, and Athelian left him behind, left this council behind to look after the world, uh, while he went off on a crusade. And someone on that council betrayed the rest of the council, so that Vetch could get in and like do evil stuff. And that guy's name was uh asis asis a s c no a oh, i don't know how you spell it but it's it's the middle part of the of the word of the name judas iscariot as in judas who betrayed jesus so he's like judas iscariot he's a s s uh and then um vetch the villain his name sounds like witch 
like the White Witch from The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Athelion is A, the Lion. Aslan, the Lion. So there's like a, quite a lot in there that you're like, oh my god, it's all just... It's, it's all Chronicles of Narnia and the Bible. And of course, uh, the idea was in future games that presumably Athelion on that rock, chained to that rock, dead, would probably end up coming back to life after three days, maybe. Um, and, uh, you know, you've got the resurrection there. And uh, uh, so uh, it, it's, it's kind of crazy that, like, it's all kind of been been squeezed in there in like relatively subtle ways. Like I didn't really notice that Athelion was called <laughs> Aslan the Lion, um, but he is. There you go. Um, so, uh, but sadly, sadly, the other games didn't happen. We never got to see the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, uh, King Athelion. But um, there you go. So. Uh, that's about it. Like Aslan and the Stone Table. Exactly, Gregor Monkey. Yeah, it's much like that. You know, Aslan... So, obviously, in the Bible, Jesus sacrifices himself more broadly for humanity's sins. But in uh, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, literally, Aslan says to the, to the villain, if instead of killing Haven, you kill me, can we make a deal there? So, it's more literal there. Like, it's it's the, the hero Jesus character saying, literally, chain me up and stab me, if it means you are not going to kill that other hero character over there, Haven slash Edmund Pevensey, you know? So that's, like, really... That's like for like. So, uh, there you go. Just a little more a little more interesting stuff there. And if you go on to YouTube, if you want to know even more about this game, uh, John Burton has done a couple of videos about, like, early builds of this, and he, there's footage out there of the... Traveler's Tales creature as the main playable character of this game. Like with the, they did like a proof of concept, um, and uh, you can you can see like really early versions of the game. Um, so it's all there on, it's all there on uh, on YouTube. Um, Jennykin says, "Peeps, have you seen the '80s TV series? It seems like peak Peter Austin to me. I have. I've got it on DVD. Um, it's it's up there with the Box of Delights." The Line the Witch in the Wardrobe with the hand-drawn CGI. Uh, it's cool. It's very charming. And maybe this Christmas that's what we'll be watching. Um, I don't know. But it's, yeah, it's lovely, that that version. Uh, let me, while we're at it, as it's only just gone 5 p.m., I do really want, I know I've mentioned it a couple of times now, but I think this is so so lovely so just endearing yeah howdy pete just quickly stopping by after class just Lavender. recovering from days of heg due to the vaccine and just want to say thank you to you all for your support over the past few few days days uh one moment just just a moment can i do this without I really want to show you guys Lavender Castle because it was designed by the same guy, Rodney Matthews, who did all the artwork for it. And you can see in some of the spaceship designs and stuff and the character designs that it is quite Haven-esque. Um, so if I go on to display capture, yeah, that should do it. Here we go. This is the intro to Lavender Castle and it's lovely. Like, the, these guys look like people that Haven would encounter on his adventures. I think it's great. Um, there's so much stuff from, like, the kind of the the 80s and the 90s that people don't know about and is, you know, it deserves to be archived and protected and stuff. Um, I think I... I think I might have... I think I might have the DVD of that because... Um, I mean, it's no cap. Yeah, Doctor Aegon is is dragon, <laughs> clearly. Uh, it's no Captain Scarlet, but it looks amazing. Yeah, it's that's the thing. It's um, it's Jerry Anderson, uh, who uh, who did the likes of Captain Scarlet, Thunderbirds, that kind of thing. Strong Dark Crystal vibes. 
um, other than the CG. I would have loved this as a child, says Gregor Monkey. Ab absolutely. Uh, Jack Bradshaw says it was on CITV. Um, I don't remember what it was on. Uh, it may well have been on CITV. I, I don't remember. The models are beautiful. They are. It's that um, very plasticine looking stop motion. It's great. Um, I should say, Jack Bradshaw, I should read your message properly now. I got a bit distracted by Lavender Castle. 100 blips. Howdy, Pete. Just stopping by quickly after class. Just recovering from days of heck due to the vaccine. Just want to say that uh, thank you to you all for your support over the past few days. Oh, well, Jack, I'm sorry that you've uh, been suffering side effects. Um, uh, I'm, I know some people who've had the vaccine and they've been more fortunate. So that's a shame that you've... Uh, come under fire by your own body but hey that means it's working right it means it's been identified as a as a as a, a bad thing has been put in you and we're gonna learn how to fight the bad thing that's how it works so it's it's all immune response so um you know i hope you're feeling better soon other people listening don't let that put you off getting your own vaccine of course if you hear about any of your friends or loved ones or whatever uh, having having some side effects, of course, you know, everyone's free to make their own decision, of course, but my recommendation would be to have the vaccine. It's best for all of us. Uh, the old dude brothers with a handful of blips there. Thank you very much indeed. Um, excellent. While we're tangentially talking about stop motion plasticine animation, have you ever played The Neverhood? I haven't, but I'm aware of it. Um, and it's something I'll probably cover in a playback one day. I want to do stop motion stop motion video games or claymation games on the on the PS1 because there are a few of them actually in fact we've already done one on the dinosaurs episode of playback that I did the uh, what was it called primal rage <laughs> that was that was quite the game um, but uh, yeah TY Pete and I agree not everyone will have to go through what I went through uh, yeah no absolutely um, it's all it's all for the best and it's a shame that some people are, are gonna have a bit of a rough time with it uh, and a, a very small number of people are going to have a much a much worse time with it because that's just how these things work statistically. But um, it's all about risk and reward, isn't it? You have to think about uh, whether it's whether it's right for you. And I'm sure for most people, it hopefully hopefully is. Uh, unrelated, but I was humming Fraggle Rock theme to myself yesterday. Oh, Dead Eye Minis. Yeah, I I'm aware of Fraggle Rock. I don't know I don't know it that well, but I, I'm aware. Um, the same, the same studio that did Lavender Castle did a, a great few series and a couple of feature film uh, versions of The Wind in the Willows that some of you might remember. It's just done in exactly the same style with those really cool stop motion models. Um, but uh, yeah, so there we go. That's that's about it. Um, possibly possibly doing some more haven next week just to show you the end game or what i might do is in my own t what i could do if i can be bothered which maybe i can't be is actually unlock the secret ending all in my own time so get all the black diamonds uh <laughs> which will take a while because I don't think we'll do it in one stream. It's that long. It's that much of a of a task. So what I could do is get all the black diamonds on my own time so that we can see the final ending. And actually what I'll do then in the stream is I'll be able to just flit from one tower to the next. And if we get bored or if, it's, if we're struggling too much, I can just like maybe even have some save states or all of them. And I can just sort of show them to you. And then at the end of the stream, whether I've actually been able to complete them all in one stream or not, I'll then just like load up. Well, here is what would happen if we'd got them all. So we could do that. That's probably the best way to do it, actually. Um, so maybe, maybe we'll do that. Um, if not, I'll be playing a different game. It might be, it might be Spyro 2 on PS1, given that that keeps winning the poll. Uh, if not, it might be Halo 3. Uh, and let me let me pull up the list because I was talking about the games I want to play, and I've got a little notepad note on here of various options, options. Um, I mean, when uh, we're expecting, I I suspect it might be delayed to a certain extent, uh, but we're expecting Star Wars, Lego Star Wars, the Sky the Skywalker Saga, 
in, I think they were saying the second quarter of this year. That's originally what they were saying. So that could be any time from April to June. So that, that could suddenly drop out of nowhere or maybe they'll delay it, I don't know. But um, so when that comes out, I'll definitely want to play that. Um, but uh, so yeah, like Skyrim and Oblivion as, as Normie Knob Day. Um, those are those are options. Maybe I certainly wouldn't complete this game on stream because flip me, I've never even completed in real life. It's just huge. But I'd quite like to just play a bit of Dragon's Dogma. That's quite a fun game, actually. Interesting uh, world, open world. Um, there's a PS2 game that probably won't work very well on the emulator called um, Forgotten Realms Demon Stone. It's got Patrick Stewart in it. Um, it's just a kind of hack and slash fantasy game. It's a bit like the Two Towers game, actually. Um, uh, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance, one of my favourite PS2 games of all time. I found it uh, in hidden in a hiding place just before Christmas. I'd asked for it from my parents. I found it while they were out of the house. I played it for two hours and then hid it again. <laughs> and then on Christmas Day I went, oh! Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance, how kind! Thank you! Uh, Sir Patrick Stewart reminds Jenikins. Thank you very much. Yes, Sir. Sir Patrick Stewart. Um, man, there's, I've got a big list here, actually. Uh, what I'd really love to play one day, but I just I can't get it working because it's a PC game from, like, the 90s. Uh, or it's, maybe it's a bit later than that. Maybe it's early noughties. I don't know. Star Wars Droid Works. It's a Lucas learning game where you build droids and send them on missions. And there's just, like, a weird issue that you can't go up inclines in that game if you play it on modern systems uh, so that's that's a real shame uh, what else is on here um, yeah maybe Ratchet and Clank um, like Shadow of the Colossus perhaps maybe you guys could also sit with me through The Witcher 3 to make me actually play it properly but that's a big game you know I wouldn't be able to do that on stream um so, uh, yeah, all kinds, all kinds of options. Knights of the Old Republic. But again, that's a game that I've not played in full myself, so I kind of want to play that on my own time first. Uh, oh, and also, very soon, thinking about it, in like a couple of weeks, Star Wars Republic Commando's coming out. I know some of you aren't into Star Wars, and I am very, very loudly into Star Wars, but uh, that game's being re-released, isn't it? On like... Uh... It's like the 11th of April or something like that. Um, and that is also actually a game that I never got to play in full. Uh, but it is one that I would just sit down and stream because I think it's pretty linear. It's just a first person shooter. So uh, we would actually be able to just sit and play. You know, I'm not going to get lost in that kind of game, I don't think. So I would happily just sit and play that. Um, so yeah, I'd be up for that. Charlie Badger says Yoda stories stream when is that the weird top down because I had let me just see if this is what Yoda stories is I think it is yeah okay so Yoda stories if you look look at what that is in that and like the, the the presentation of it I had the Indiana Jones version of this game it was called Indiana it, it had like a splash screen from like Raiders of the Lost Ark it was Indy holding his whip and it said Indiana Jones and then underneath the subtitle of the game instead of Raiders of the Lost Ark or you know uh, Temple of Doom it said desktop adventures and it was this top down really big bobblehead Indiana Jones and you go around like shooting Nazis <laughs> it was like the perfect game for me oh I had a great time with that um so yeah, maybe Republic Commando actually when that comes out. I think it's is it like early April? Republic Commando P uh, release date April sixth. So that's just after two streams time. So we've got next week's stream on the 29th and the one after that on the fifth. Um, so I can either delay my stream on the fifth maybe do it later in that week and we could play Republic Commando or I could choose a game next week that I could maybe just play for a couple of sessions oh but then the one after that after the 6th will be my birthday so then that'll be um, that'll be the, the Unholy War stream won't it so maybe next week 
on the 29th, I'll try and maybe play a one-off game if I can choose one that will that will suit. The week after that, on the 5th, that's when we'll do the birthday stream, even though my birthday won't be until for Saturday. Uh, and I'll do a just two hours of Unholy War purely for my own enjoyment and for Lobrotovich, of course. And then on the 12th, the Monday after that, we'll start Republic Commando. That's probably what we'll do. So join me next week, maybe for one last session of Haven. Week after that, Unholy War. And the week after that, Republic Commando begins. That sounds like a good plan. Uh, subject to seeing how things go with Haven in my own time, off camera, off stream, trying to get it working, or trying to trying to trying to do all this stuff off camera because that's really the only way we're going to be able to do it. I think. Um, otherwise, I'll just choose a different game. We'll do that for a week. Uh, there we go. People talking about water rats now in the chat because we've got talking about unholy uh, about unholy war, wind in the willows. Yeah, they're easily confused. Anyway, that's it. I've been talking for a while now. My voice is starting to go. So um, thank you, everyone. Hope you enjoy. You finally, you've experienced it yourselves. The the blue balled to coin a very horrible term phrase. Uh, the the blue balled ending of Haven Call of the King. Literally in the penultimate cutscene, Vetch shouts at you all that effort for nothing, and that is exactly how you feel leaving this game. You have to feel sorry for Traveller's Tales, the designers who put all their heart and soul into this, and you know, you can see how enthusiastic they are in that little making of video. I, you know, my heart goes out to them, and maybe somewhere out there, someone owns the rights to Haven Call of the King, and it might just be, I mean, it, it would work as an adaptation into a TV show or something, I think. I think it could be quite good little, you know, little little animated show. Uh, maybe they could get the, the the Lavender Castle team to do it in stop motion. That would be awesome. Uh, so there's a, there's a glimmer of hope that someone, uh, maybe it's still Traveller's Tales or Midway who own the rights, will just unearth the fact that, oh, we own this. Maybe we could just sell it to someone, see if they want to use it. Uh, unlikely, but who's to say? Um, get Adam to use some of that £34 million to get the rights. Yeah, I should do. I should do. We, sh we should buy it. Yeah, can we chip in? Can we all get together and buy the rights? <laughs> that would be fantastic. Um, wonderful. Well, thank you, mods. Thank you, chat. Thank you, everyone who's given bits and has subscribed today and donated. You're all a wonderful bunch of human beings and or other things. And uh, I will see you on Thursday for the joint Blaze It stream, which is a sleepover stream. And before that, we will, of course, be doing the Discord call. So if you want to chat to us um, and you're not already a member of the Walrus Child tier on Patreon, head to patreon.com forward slash team triple jump, where you can join that tier and uh, do, do the voice chat with us just before we go live on Thursday. Um, but other than that, keep your eyes peeled on the channel for all the usual stuff, lists and uh, podcasts and uh, stuff, things, other things too. And uh, Ben will be live at the end of the week, I'm sure. Wonderful. All right. Bye then, everyone. Oh, I just slipped off the button. Bye then, everyone. It's not worked, has it? Why is that? By the no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna make sure this button's gonna work first. How are you guys? Are you doing all right? Are you having a good time? But, but no, I'm not gonna do it yet. You can't make me. Twenty-four hour stream confirmed. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's. I could do it now, just so you know. I'm not. I'm not struggling with it. But I'm just. I. I feel like now, you know. Now I'm kind of. There's an expectation on me to press it, and if I just sort of linger for a bit. Then it looks looks more intentional. You guys are right. Mods, don't you dare go. We've got chat to moderate. We're not we're not done here. You could wait for us all to leave first, says Gregor Monkey. This is content, it is. You know we'll all just sit here. This is this, 
This is the stare at TP part of the stream. Yeah, uh, let's see who blinks first. I don't mean literally. Let's have a blinking staring competition. I mean, let's see who leaves first. If I just stay live now for hours and hours and hours, just sitting here like Snoop Dogg, it wasn't even on camera, I don't think. See how long you last. The Farwall says, hello. Have you just arrived, Farwall? Welcome to the post, post, post stream. Uh, is he gonna wait until 5.20? Oh, I could do. Should we do that? Should we hang around? To no, let's not. I'm done. <laughs> uh, right, my cursor is definitely on the button. By then, everyone, look at button. Make sure cursor is still on it. Press left mouse button so that stream stops. 